correct me if I'm wrong, because it's the first time I'm on TV, so. Um, <laughs> it's first week. So, your uh, climate change program, the mass mobilization, it's mandatory enrollment from the age of 18 to 26 no, no, for no. one year? No, no. What I did say, I have not said mandatory enrollment. What no. I have said is this. I, I would not submit legislation. But what I have said is that I think it would be a very good idea to have a non-binding referendum, a referendum that would only be votes taken among American citizens between the age of 18 and 26. I want to hear what Americans between 18 and 26 have to say about this. So much of what I said tonight in title entails a huge shift, a huge season of moral repair. Everything from our schools to rural hospitals that are closing to the need for infrastructure repair, for the regreening of our economy, for the regreening of our infrastructure, the regreening of our power grids. This goes beyond even what the Green New Deal itself will do. So what I have suggested is a referendum where people between the age of 18 and 26 will vote. And I think at the very least this will be a very healthy conversation in our society. And what I'd like to propose if this referendum, the idea of this referendum, the yes and the no, the yes would be one year of mandatory national service for Americans between the age of 18 and 26. At one point, you would give one year to your country. If you want to be a, a teacher, great, because we really need you in one of these underserved schools. You want to be a doctor or a nurse, great. We really want to, we need you in these rural hospitals that are closing as we speak. You want to be an architect, we really, really need you in order to, uh, in order to repair a bridge or a hospital or whatever. So that's the idea, only of a referendum, not a mandatory, uh, nothing mandatory, just a referendum. Great, right, thank you. Ms. Williamson, you spoke at the No Labels Convention yesterday, and Politics Bitsy was, was there. And their, that organization's goal is to work about compromising and going across the aisle. Obviously, in the Senate, it's a Republican majority, and it's very hyper-partisan. How would you plan to get some of these plans passed, some of these in the art of the compromise? Well, obviously, we have co-equal branches of government. The president does not have a magic wand, which right now, Thank God. If you have a Democratic president, which we all, I believe, should be committed to having a Democratic president in 2020, then that president will have to be dealing, hopefully, with a Democratic Senate. We shouldn't just assume that it will be a Republican Senate. Everybody talks about you have to deal with a Republican <coughs> Senate. Maybe not. Maybe not. And I know in my case, if the conscience of this country is changed enough to elect me president, it's reasonable to assume the conscience of this country is changed enough to make it have a Democratic Senate. Look what happened in the last uh, in the last midterm. So I don't think we should go around accepting that Mitch McConnell is going to be the next uh, Senate leader. He absolutely might not be. But if it is a, is a Republican, uh, one would hope that it would be a Republican Party that has reclaimed its soul, because both major political parties need to do that right now. There would be more statesmen who would actually be willing to work in an honorable way with the president. If we do have, what you're mentioning, uh, an obstructive Republican Party, uh, where uh, Mitch McConnell would be saying something along the line of what he said about Obama, our biggest goal is that Obama be a one-term president, then uh, as president, uh, I would, be, uh, I would not be timid with the use of executive power. I would not overuse or abuse the way this president does, but neither would I be timid, neither would I just present an olive branch to someone who has already made it very, very clear. He wants nothing uh, more than to bite off my hand. The president has a lot of power. And uh, if you have to be fierce and uh, uh, do what you can with the power of the presidency within the purview of, of the power of the presidency, then I'm prepared to do that. Thank you. Uh, now we'll turn it over.